354 counties in Texas. You know the total number of counties that have listened to either side of the voters is zero? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if they're Democrat, doesn't matter if they're Republican run, they don't care. Right? Welcome to the Robert West Podcast coming to you Thursday morning, like always, from the permanent command bunker deep in the heart of East Texas. All right. To start off with our double GOP program this week, we have Guadalupe, Goliad, Gonzalez, Gray, and Grayson counties. All right, uh, let me see here. Gonzalez has zero precinct chair. So if you want to be in charge of the GOP in Gonzalez County, it's easy. You raise your hand, you get sworn in, you fill an empty chair. You are the GOP CEC in that county. It should be easy. Find somebody in that county, put them in touch with us, and we'll coach them through it. The other thing going on is with Guadalupe. We have Bob Bruker who has stepped up. He's newly to that area. He just moved there. He's already got the voter rolls. He's already hitting the ground running. Uh, I imagine he's gonna be filling 30, 40 chairs here pretty soon. We need these done before the primaries, folks. We've got to have these chairs filled. There's 3,500 of them across Texas. You don't have to wait for us to highlight a county. You can jump in. If you contact us and you want to be a lead for a county, you go to the top of the list. You'll be on the, you'll be on the list next week. So what's going on? Uh, we have another formal announcement. We are going to endorse Dennis London for House District 33. He'll be running against Justin Holland. Why is this easy? Well, this is really easy for me, okay? Dennis is a fellow veteran. He's U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, he's a Texan on purpose. I, I've known him for a couple years now. I met him when he, him and his wife were doing the Don't California My Texas tour and letting us know how this happened, how the GOP kept going more towards the middle, how the GOP didn't hold on to its conservative roots, and how conservatives turned away. Uh, they didn't want a choice between Democrat and Democrat light, so they just didn't show up. And California went blue. I, my wife has seen this happen in Washington State. I've seen this happen in Colorado while I was on contract up there. I see it happening in Texas, folks. If we do not hold our elected Republicans accountable, if we let them vote like Democrats and we keep reelecting them, they will keep voting more and more like Democrats. This is something you need to look at. What is your state legislator's conservative rating? If it's going down, 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 down every time they, you send them back, that means they are voting more and more and more like a Democrat. And you're still voting for these clowns, okay? That tells them it's okay to vote like a Democrat. Do you know anybody whose conservative rating goes up? Anybody. It, chart it, okay? If it goes down, 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 pick somebody else. Yeah, you can see where it's going. Change directions. Step up. Run if you have to. Dennis London has seen this. Justin Holland, just this session, has authored a bill taking away local government authority and handing it to the states uh, when it comes to property. Uh, he's authored a bill that would turn me saying that into a political advertisement. And I'd be subject to Secretary of State and all the FEC rules because it would be a political commercial for his opponent. Well, that's BS. You can call out your elected officials. You can call out the laws they wrote for, voted for, voted against. And that's not a political advertisement. That's the truth. Okay? So let's call that out. Uh, Dennis London will be running against Justin Holland. Justin Holland just this year was one of the clowns that voted to raise the age you'd have to be to own a firearm in Texas. That's right, folks. Now, my son joined the military at 18. Dennis joined the U.S. Marine Corps at 17. That is ridiculous to have somebody able to operate a machine gun in the Marine Corps to, to go out and do a tour, two tours, three tours, come back and not be allowed to own a gun. They're not adult enough, okay? This is the thing about the Bill of Rights, folks. You can't pick and choose. The Bill of Rights is the Bill of Rights, and if you're an adult, you get all of them. Raising the gun age to 21, why don't we raise the voting age to 35? Why don't we raise freedom of speech to 55? If you can raise it to 21 and you can raise it to 18, you know, what's to keep the next person in line going, you know what, we're going to stop gun violence. We're going to raise the uh, age to legally own a gun to 115 
Gun violence will go to zero. It won't. Legal ownership of guns will go to zero. But it won't stop crime because criminals don't pay attention to laws. That's actually the definition of criminal. So all these people that think outlawing guns is going to solve anything, murder's already illegal. They don't pay attention to it. But Justin Holland actually voted to have a system where some people were going to have to wait 21 to get all of their rights. He didn't vote that some people aren't going to pay federal taxes or state taxes or income taxes. Nope. He's going to keep taxing you just like you're a grown adult. Still charge you with a crime as an adult. From the time you turn 18, you're an adult. But not in Justin Holland's eyes. He thinks for some of your rights, you need to wait till you're 21. Well, that's BS. It's against the Second Amendment. It's what Dennis put his life on the line to depend, defend. It's what I put my life on to, to defend. It's what my child put their lives on the line to defend. The U.S. Constitution. And he spit on it. And he shouldn't be in office anymore. If that's not enough, violating the First Amendment, violating the Second Amendment, the guy either doesn't care about the Constitution or doesn't know. And I don't care if he's evil or stupid. He, he should not be in the Texas legislature. That's enough, okay? I know he's a real estate guy, so he doesn't really know or care about laws or constitutions or anything like that. Get rid of him. Now, this, this guy represents Collin County and Rockwell County. Now, I know Rockwell... I don't know the last time they did anything to hold an elected person accountable. I really don't. The last I heard, their chair, uh, Sharon Henson, I believe, 214-674-5374, or rockwallrepublicans at gmail.com, you can reach her. She was asking for citizen input on if they should hold this guy accountable or not. See, this is weird. These people are like large and in charge when they're standing there and they want something. But when you ask them to hold an elected accountable, it's like, oh, my hands are tied. Only the voters get to decide that would no, 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 no. You're the head of the GOP. If you can't read Rule 44, if you can't see that it's justified, if you can't see that you should censure this person for violating the First Amendment and the Second Amendment, then go through the rest of his voting record because it's garbage. He constantly votes with the Democrats. And if you have to wait to be told to do this, then somebody else should do your job. Now, I challenge anybody in Rockwall, prove me wrong. Is there one precinct chair in Rockwall County that will bring up a censure of Dave Phelan? Is there one precinct chair in Rockwall County that will bring up a censure of Justin Holland? Just one. Just one. Are one of you brave enough to do it? And can you get a second? Then get the vote. Ask for it to be recorded so we know who needs to be replaced and who gets to keep a precinct chair position. Now, over in Collin County, you guys took over Collin County. So that's great. You kicked out the elites. You got a brand new county chair. You got brand new precinct chairs. What have you been doing with it? Have you censured Dave Phelan? Have you censured Justin Holland? Both of these people have done plenty to justify that under Rule 44. And if anybody tells you otherwise, they're liars. They're either lying because they're getting something out of it or they're lying because they're just scared. I call that cowards and cronies. Now, I know over in Tarrant County, they won't do anything because they're afraid their funding will dry up. They've sold out to the political class. The political class donates a lot of money. Greg Abbott donates a lot of money. The, the, the Texas Women's Republicans, oh, you could forget about them holding an elected accountable because you look at where their budget comes from. Their budget comes from the elected. They're not going to hold anybody accountable. That's a corrupt organization. Young Republicans in Texas are right behind them with that. When you get all your money, and that money is more important than your principles, then you're sold out. Stop being sold out. That's why this country is circling the drain. Everybody's trying to get a piece, and nobody's doing what they should be doing except for a select few people. Now, thank God Dennis London is stepping up. He's giving you a choice in the primaries. But you're going to have to work. If you think he's the guy, he, you des he deserves your vote, then he deserves your help. He deserves you to be a volunteer. He deserves you to donate some money. 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it is. This is not going to fix itself, folks. You're going to have to get involved. Dennis London is the start of that. You can clean up your own house. 
You want a certain person president. Well, you don't have control over that. You want a certain person to be governor. So did I. But you don't have control over that. If you don't, can't clean up your own tent, if you can't clean up your own precinct, your own county, your own state legislator, what, choice, what chance do we have of cleaning up the federal level? So that's what I'm calling on. Everybody, get involved, get in there, and get it done. Dennis London is a good person with a good heart. He deserves your vote. He deserves your support. Make sure it happens. And he has mine. Welcome back. All right, so I ask you to get involved. A lot of people ask, what can I do? I still get that. Okay, I wrote a book. It tells you what to do. It's, it's pretty simple. I use small words. I don't, I, don't, I don't use long sentences. I put plenty of spaces in there to make notes. There's no excuse. There's nobody in Texas should be asking, what can I do right now? The five-star plan is out there, and it works. We've gotten rid of people in the state legislature. They've resigned. We've, we've gotten people not to run. We've got other people to run. We've replaced bad people. We've replaced politicians with patriots time after time, okay? We can do more, but we need your help to get involved. If you don't have a copy of the book, get it. It's on Amazon. It's under 13 bucks. It's cheaper than most pizzas. Uh, the second one out there, the Five Star Plan 2024, it's a list of issues and possible solutions and who you need to contact to get these solutions done or who you need to replace to get these solutions implemented. A lot of times, other organizations will tell you to go down there and try to get bad people to do good things. That is not biblical, okay? You're not going to get good fruit from a bad tree. Stop trying to shake a thorn tree expecting an apple to fall. Every once in a while, something nice will happen, and you think it's because you shook that thorn tree, right? Somebody's throwing a, an orange in your direction. That is a trick, okay? We should not have to be down there begging our elected representatives to do the right thing. We wrote down what we wanted them to do. It's called a platform. Then we highlighted some stuff. That's called legislative priority. They can't get that done. They're down there right now patting each other on the back for getting everything done that they wanted but not what we wanted. Now, as Republicans, we're upset about that. But feel bad for your Democrat counterparts as far as voters go because their party ain't listening to them either. The elected class do not listen to the voters, Democrat or Republicans, okay? Nobody on the South Texas border wants that border wide open. Nobody. That is a prime opportunity for the Republican Party to turn the state solid red, but we don't have any Republicans brave enough to do it. We don't have any Republicans closing that border, invoking the Constitution, saying this is an invasion and it needs to stop, especially not in the governor's office. And I don't know if we ever will with the way things are going. But I do know if you take that book and you implement that book, we have proven over and over and over again it works. Nobody that you elect is going to solve this. You are going to solve it. The only purpose of making this, watching this country go to hell in a handbasket and doing nothing is the person in the mirror. I'm nobody special, okay? I really, I'm not. But if there were a thousand of me or ten thousand of me, Texas would be a different place. I could go back to doing what I like to do instead of spending all my time doing this. I dream about that day, okay? That is my goal. I want every citizen to be involved. I want every citizen to walk around and realize they're a king or a queen. Stop asking for permission to do good things. Stop waiting for the party to give you permission to do good things. They're not going to do it, folks. They're as corrupt as the rest of them. If you're the only honest person in Texas then you need to fix it. You need to step forward. You need to gain your friends and your coworkers and your family's trust. And you need to gather them up and get them to the primaries because 17% isn't getting it done. About 10% of the people that vote, about 10% of the people that live here in this state work for the government. That means more than half of them are showing up and determine who's in charge. And that's unacceptable. You don't pick your own boss. You don't vote for your own raises. That's BS. The citizens have to be involved at every level or we're done. This experiment is over. And I don't think that we're done. I don't think our best days are behind us. But it's going to take you and it's going to take me and it's going to take a whole lot of people like us to get it done and to save it.
That's what this is all about. Thank you, Dennis London, for your service. And thank you for your continued service. Now, every other veteran out there, what have you done this year to, to make a difference? Till next week, think about that. Robert West.